Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. I'm just gonna be dropping this one real quick because I've been really slacking on actually covering this topic. So today we're gonna to be creating a physics simulation where everything starts at normal speed and then it slows down because we're gonna actually keyframe the gravity. So I'm gonna show you guys this little cool trick that I kind of came up with and I'm sure it's been used before, but let's go ahead and hop into a new document here. I'm not gonna save this one. I'm gonna delete the cube delete the light, and I'm just gonna add in a plane. I'm gonna scale it up a bunch, object, apply, scale. And then since this is our floor, we're gonna add a rigid body, passive type, um, shape convex hull, that's fine. And then under surface response, let's turn the bounciness up to 0.75. And let's go ahead and add in a mesh cylinder, bring it up on the Z axis, go to our side view, scale it down on the Z axis a little bit, object, apply, scale. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a rigid body, active type, convex hull, bounciness, I'll just do 0.5 for now. And I'm just going to give this a little bit of rotation. I'm going to go ahead and play my simulation. And as you can see, we have a coin dropping. Now everything looks good so far. I want to add a few more coins. And since we already have our physics applied to this, shift D to duplicate. Make sure you're on frame one when you're duplicating. Otherwise, things are going to be really, really glitchy when you're trying to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this one. I'm just going to rotate and scale these a few times and then I'll even take these and I'll just duplicate those and rotate those as well. So now um, I'm just going to save this really, really quickly as blah, 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 blah to the desktop. Let's go ahead and play this back. As you can see, not much is happening here and that is because um, we haven't keyframed anything yet. And we can also adjust the bounciness later. I'm just going to turn the bounciness all the way up for the floor and play this back one more time. Everything is looking pretty good. I'm going to adjust the bounciness for the cylinders. I'm going to just make it 0.75. And then I'm going to, with this one selected, I'm going to shift click everything else. Object, rigid body, copy from active. Now let's go ahead and play this back again. Now they're looking a little more bouncy. So I think we're going to actually get this effect we're looking for now. Um, I think I might actually take these and duplicate them one more time and just rotate them like, like that. Just make sure none of them are touching. Sometimes that can result in glitchy physics simulation. So let's head over to our scene tab here. Pop open this gravity tab. You'll see that it's negative 9.8 meters squared, meters squared per second. That is the actual rate of gravity on Earth. So I'm actually keyframe that right here. I'm gonna make this negative 20 and then insert a keyframe, right? Insert. Now let's go ahead and play this back for a second and see where, when these things start to hit the ground. So they looks like they start to hit at about 17. So around 17, I'm actually gonna keyframe the gravity again, right? So drop one more keyframe. Then I'm gonna move to frame 18 and I'm gonna make it zero. Now let's insert another keyframe. So we have, it starts at negative 20, goes to negative 20 again, and then it goes to zero. So let's go ahead and just see what this looks like. All right, so do you guys see what has happened here? So you see how they go flying off into space? The reason this is happening, and I, I love this fact, um, is because at first we're, we're bringing these down with a heavy force of gravity. And then once they hit the ground, they go flying away because there's no longer any gravity. So any forces that were applied will still be applied. And so when they hit the ground, the, the reverse force that is applied from the ground will still apply and they'll send all these coins flying. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit cooler. Let's go ahead and highlight all these, scale them down a bit and just duplicate them. I'm just gonna bring these ones like right here. Basically, I just wanna create a, a few more of these so we have a bunch to work with. All right, let's go ahead and play this back. Again, still the same effect. And maybe I'll just grab them all again, scale them down a little bit more, and then maybe rotate them like this. Bring them closer to the floor. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Still super cool. You guys get the idea. Everything scatters. Um, I just think this is such a cool effect. It just looks awesome. And you can bake your simulation, but to be honest, my computer is not having any issues at all with this effect. And I just think it's such a simple effect to create with basically minimal effort. And yes, it works with any shape. Just make sure you mess with your physics settings to get something you like. I think this is perfect. You can go ahead and apply materials and lighting to this. I just wanted to drop this quick tutorial because I feel like this is super useful content for creating a slow motion effect with actual physics. Now you can actually animate the speed of the world if you want to and achieve something similar, but I think this method is perfect 
because there's really not a lot of work involved. Um, it's really just play back your simulation, and if you like what you see, you're good to go. I just think it looks awesome. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, let me know if you decide to use this technique. I think it's super useful, and I will see you in the next tutorial.